Hey everyone! How's everyone's day going so far? I was trying to prep for this stream, and there's so many mods to cover. So thanks uh, for supplying me with so many amazing mods. Some of these we've covered before, but I'm going to speed run through uh, those. But I still want to cover them. Uh, and then what I'm going to be doing is checking off the ones I cover. That way, if we need to do a part two, uh, we can go ahead and... Uh, make sure we keep track of which ones we've covered before. Uh, doing good? I'm glad you're doing good. How am I? I have had a long week at work, but it always makes me super excited to get back into Stardew Valley because it's just so relaxing. And then it's always exciting to check out the mods, so... I have some mods downloaded, so we can pretty much probably get started right away. But I want to make sure I have the mod pages open as well. So I'll have a thousand tabs open, so bear with me. But let me get the game going in the background, and then we'll start showing some of these mods off. Is anyone, I don't know if anyone lives in the north, but finally starting to get some really nice weather and I cannot wait for that actual spring vibe to set in as we get into summer as well. All right, so let me share the appropriate Chrome screen. I think this is the right one. Yeah. So we're going to just go straight into it. So if you don't know, today's uh, today's stream is going to be purely me showcasing all of the wonderful mods that you guys have recommended to me on the Discord in the Mod Recommendations channel. So if you don't know already, I have a Discord and we talk about Stardew Valley mostly uh, in mods in specifically. And I just absolutely love to get recommendations from you guys, because you guys find all the good stuff. I'm in the south, and we just finished three days of rain. Hopefully your area can handle all the rain, because I know flooding's been an issue this year with some places. So, let's get into the first mods I'm going to cover. So, I have these ones... Uh, installed already so we'll hop into the game but I first want to go over uh, the Nexus pages with you so the first thing we're going to cover is Daisy Nico's earthy interface so this pairs right along with Daisy Nico Nico's earthy recolor which is a mod that I'm actually using in my current playthrough it is a wonderful reshade for Stardew Valley that, like the name suggests, is a lot of earthy tones and textures. And I absolutely love it. And I was so happy to see it get updated for 1.6. So we'll be briefly showing that off, as well as the interface that goes with it. Uh, we'll also be showing off. And then some of these I'm not showing off quite yet, so let me organize them a bit. We'll also be showing off Visible Fish. This is another one I've been using in my playthrough, but I want to show it off again on stream. Dynamic Reflections, which, as the name suggests, is it literally shows the reflections of yourself and any NPC walking by the water. And it also shows the starry sky at night, so we'll get to see that as well. And then... Messy Crops, which changes the positioning of crops so that they are a little offset left uh, or right so that it doesn't look like neat rows of crops anymore. So if you have ever wanted a true kind of rustic garden feel, this is just the mod you're probably looking for. And then to pair with that, we're also going to be looking at crop variation. So crop variation uh, changes the size and color of crops. And then 
I believe I have a few more in here as well. Let me double check. Yeah, I have better crafting. So better crafting organizes the crafting menu. And we'll cover some of these Nexus pages more in depth as we hit the mods in game. But just as a general overview. And it also allows you to bulk craft, which I found very useful in my playthrough actually uh, yesterday. And then I think that might be all I have downloaded for our first uh, go into the game. And then we'll be covering more mods later. I just wanted to only batch install because there's some uh, content patcher mods that might conflict with each other that I wanted to make sure each mod got its proper showcase. But if you have any questions as we go through these, let me know. I'll pause and try to answer any questions that I can. And then to also give another update of how I'm organizing all these mods, again, with your Stardew Valley mods folder, you can have parent folders. So I have a testing folder, which is what we're going to be showcasing today. But I also organize my folders by theme. So I have like a content patcher mods folder, a disabled folder, which if you don't know, you can disable files in mods by simply putting a period in front of the folder name, including parent folders. And that's how I organize my mods. So let's go ahead and hop right into the game. Let me get it showing on the screen. There we go. And I just wanted to give a special thanks to two people in particular, since they really drove the mod recommendations for today's stream. And it's funny because I don't think I've ever said your guys' name out loud. So you can correct me if I'm wrong because I'm bad at pronunciations. But Ruby Red and Mozzarella. And you, you can let me know if it's just pronounced like mozzarella like the cheese. I wasn't sure. But the first thing we're going to see here is actually that earthy interface that we first showcased. So if we go back to the mod page, we'll see here that it changes, obviously, the interface we just saw, but I'll actually change all of the interfaces in the game as well. And again, this is meant to pair with Daisy uh, Nico's earthy recolor reshade, which I'll be showing off as soon as we get back into the game. I'm a little confused why there's two dragonfly farms here, but I'll have to figure that out later. <laughs> but let's go ahead and get the test farm going, because that should have lots of stuff for us ready to look at. Might be a little broken from the uh, last mods we were looking at. But this is Daisy Nico's Earthy Recolor. This is currently in fall, so that is why everything is looking a little dead or having a lot more orange tones in its coloring. But we'll see here as well the Earthy interface. So just like it changed the starting screen, it also changed the interface of everything in the game as well to match the Earthy Recolor. So everything is a lot more toned down in hue and a lot more brown in texture and not texture in color. So really matching the earthy vibe. And I believe if you talk to NPCs, which we can try to find one, let's adjust the time. And what I'm using to adjust the time is the uh, C, the cheats menu, which I featured in a previous mod showcase. But if you need links to anything, let me know. But I will be providing momentarily links to Earthy Recolor and the Earthy interface. But let's go ahead and see if I am correct in that the dialogue menus also have changed. So let's first give us some speed. Okay. 
and we'll skip all of the cutscenes for today's showcase. Yep. So we'll see here, Earthy Interface also changed the dialogue menu. So it's just a really great pairing with that Earthy Reshade mod. So let me go ahead and link that uh, to everyone. So the first one I'm going to link is the Daisy Nico's Earthy Interface. And you can find that mod here. And then we also saw Daisy Nico's Earthy Recolor, which we can find here. And one thing to keep in mind when you are downloading these mods is they are content patcher mods. So whenever you are downloading a mod, if you go under the description, the requirements, you'll see the required mods. You can also look at the mods uh, description to see if there's any additional instructions, but you'll want to have the content patcher framework downloaded as well. And it's the same thing with the interface mod. You'll want content patcher, I believe for that one as well. So the next mod I want to show off is the dynamic reflections in the visible fish. So we'll see here, dynamic reflections. If I go back into the game, you can see my reflection in the water. Now, if an NPC was right next to me, you could also see their reflection and it's super cool. Now, if I make it nighttime, we'll see here that you can also see the stars. And I absolutely love this about that mo uh, dynamic reflections. Adding the starry sky to the water just adds ambiance to the game. I absolutely love it. And then let's go ahead and make it daytime again. We'll see that there's fish in the water. So all of the things in the water that you see are things you can actually catch. So we have the fish, obviously, and you can see each type of fish that's currently available. But if we look over here, we'll also see the trash that you can catch in the river here. All right, so let me show the Nexus pages to you guys. So this was Visible Fish we just saw. And again, I'm not gonna go too more in depth with these since we have covered these before. But the link to Visible Fish can be found right here. The Night of the Moonlight Jellies looks amazing. Oh, that would look amazing with those mods. And then Dynamic Reflections you can find right here oh you just finished downloading that mod i absolutely love both of these mods especially together i think they pair really really well and just make the water in stardew valley so much more interesting to look at now obviously the water will look a little different because i do have earthy recolor enabled but the gist of it will be the same no matter what reshade mod you're using or if you're just sticking with vanilla textures, you'll still get that reflection and then you'll still be able to see the fish. So let's also take a look at the crops again. So I know I briefly showed those already, but I wanted to go over what exactly of these mods do again so there's two mods functioning on this tiny little farm and actually if i go to my actual playthrough i have a better farm to show you this with so if i exit to title and i load uh my game that is proper let me disable the music temporarily there we go so we'll see here a better example of farms with both the crop variation. And again, crop variation, if we go back, we'll see was basically the changing of the color and size of the crop. And it depends on the quality of the crop with how big it'll be and how close in color it should be. And you can change these in the generic mod config menu, which I'll also be showing off on today's stream. And, but then messy crops, like we mentioned earlier, is also kind of changing the 
uh, oops, let me go back to this one. It's also changing the position of the crop so that everything's not in these like perfect lines. So if you've ever wanted a more rustic garden, this is perfect <laughs> because just not having everything exactly the same really brings more life into farming, I think. I will say if you do like the perfectly straight lines, then you may not want to have the messy crop, but instead have the, have the crop variation alone, which is what I currently do in my playthrough. But if you are using other mods such as uh, the medieval buildings mod or anything like that, then having something like this can really help that uh, vibe. So let me go ahead and link those to you. Once I get my page back up, there we go. So again, messy crops was changing the position. And the link for that is right here. I, I normally turn off the trellis size changes since they kind of look weird. Yeah, I kind of agree. In real life, you probably wouldn't have different size trellises. And we can sh uh, see how to turn the, that off in the generic mod config menu in a moment. In the crop variation you can find right here. So let's go ahead, head back into the game and let's go to the title menu. Now, if you have generic mod config uh, installed, then you're gonna see a little gear icon on the bottom left like this. If we click this, this is the generic mod config menu menu. <laughs> and this basically most mods that are made nowadays usually support the generic mod config menu. Not all of them will, but the ones that do allow you to change the config and the options for mods within the game itself so that you don't have to mess with those configs outside of the game before launching it. So we'll see here, we have messy crops and we can change whether or not you want to apply to trellises right here. So it seems like it's off by default. And then you can change the max offset, which is how much it goes to the left or right here as well. So if you want it to be mostly in a line, you could reduce this down to one. Zero would be disabled, but if you want to reduce this down to one, they would be a lot closer in a line together. And then you would just save and close. And then let's see was, yeah, crop variation is here as well. And this one you can change, oh sorry, crop variation is the one where you can resize uh, trellises. And we can disable that one, so save. And now the trellises will all be the same size. And then the other one was changing whether or not the trellises would be shifted left or right. So I apologize for my confusion there. You have space core, I think that mod curses my gameplays. I will warn you space core can mess with your gameplay but the best thing i can tell you is if you have a mod installed that uses space core um just be mindful when you uninstall the mod it usually is just a problem when you are installing and uninstalling mods but yes technically and we can actually see this in the console for Stardew Valley uh, Smappy. If I go to my desktop here, um, it'll give you a warning actually about Space Core. The may corrupt your save files. So, yes, technically anything with Space Core is a little risky. So, use it your own risk. It depends on what mod you want to use that uh, is using, utilizing that framework. And then just be mindful again, more than anything, how you uninstall that mod. So if you ever start using it, uh, keep using it is my best advice to you. So if we go back, uh, we can see here with the crop variation, you can adjust how much the size changes on your crops, as well as how much the color changes in hue. Now I will say with 
uh, Daisy, Nico, Earthy recolor, you will get some crops um, probably changing in texture anyway. So it won't stand out as much as it would in the base game. But still amazing mods have. I absolutely love the size variation. And then here you can say how much you want the size to factor by quality and how much you want the color to factor by the quality of the crop. So 100% for both of these is default. And here we can save and close. I tried to marry both Elliot and Harvey. It's on me for trying to cheat on my geeky husband. <laughs> Yeah, there is actually a mod we covered last week that allowed you to marry multiple spouses. It is an interesting mod. It even changed the size of the bed. So if you're curious for a mod like that, I would recommend checking out, I believe it was last week's uh, mod spotlight video. So that was crop variation as well as messy crops. And if there's any questions on those, please let me know. Let's see what else we have to cover on what I have downloaded at the moment. And when we go to download other mods to cover, we'll be going through the process of how to install mods as well. So in here, it looks like I may have covered everything but better crafting. So let's go back into the game and cover better crafting. So I'm actually going to show you on my test farm. And then if we go to the crafting menu, you're going to see it looks a lot different. And we can actually make it look even more different if we level up our skills. And actually, what I might do is just show you on my actual playthrough. Because I have more crafting recipes on that playthrough. So if I open my crafting menu here... We'll see that Better Crafting puts everything into categories. And it makes it so much easier to navigate the crafting menu. So we'll see here, we have decoration pieces. The Scarecrow is considered a decoration by the Better Crafting Standards, but we'll see here, stone sign, text sign, all of the paths would be here as well as fencing. They have a fertilizer and seeds category where we can, uh, any seed recipes you have, you can craft here. Fishing. And then there's machinery. It's really nice to have all the machines right next to each other. And again, I don't have all the crafting recipes on this playthrough, but it would put each new recipe you obtain in the game into the appropriate category. Then we have combat and rings. So this is also where you get explosives and stairs. And then just miscellaneous. So here is where the transmuting recipes are. And then if you want to bulk craft something, let's say I want to go out here and I'm not going to save this. So we'll just kind of play around and let's say I want to grab these iron bars, maybe these gold bars for now. Let's see if I can craft anything with those. So we have some spinners here. Let's say I wanted to craft multiple spinners. You can right click on the item. I believe it was right click. Nope. Uh, oh, you can't actually craft multiple spinners. It was fence. Sorry, this is a good one. So anything you can craft multiple of or you usually want to craft multiple of, you can right click on the item and you can insert the number of items you want to craft here. And then let's say I want to craft 20. And then I can click the button and then we'll see I've crafted 20. So instead of clicking this twice, I just did that. And if I wanted to do that for 60 more, there we go. Now I have all of the fences in a very short click of the button. So it's very nice for that. 
Uh, and if not, then you can add them to the right one. Yeah. Side note, thank you, Yora. You were actually the main reasoning for getting into Stardew Valley and teaching me how to mod through one of your older videos. Your video videos are easy to follow. I'm really happy to hear that. I try to make my videos as easy to follow as possible. I'm still in the process of updating some of my older videos for 1.6. It's just been works been a little crazy, so I've been a bit behind. But you can look forward to updated um, how to install portrait mods video coming up soon. And then uh, how to install Stardew Valley Expanded as well. So look forward to those being updated. But I already updated my how to install mods for 1.6. So if you have any concerns, if the process has changed at all, there is that updated video. All right, so that is everything that I had installed for the first go around. So I'm going to go ahead and exit to desktop. And let me check off everything we covered in the Discord. And I will see if I can post the Discord link for anyone who is curious to join. Copy link. So our Discord community you can find right here. And again, we mostly just talk about Stardew Valley and Stardew Valley mods. But if you have any mod recommendations for me, I'd be happy to cover them in future spotlight video or live streams. And then uh, the only thing to keep in mind is I do not cover any adult content. So if you have like content patcher mods that change uh, the portraits to be adult, I, I will never cover things like that. But I'm happy to cover anything that is not adult only, <laughs> if that makes sense. All right, so let me go ahead and check some stuff off. So we covered Daisy Nuko's earthy recolor and interface. We also covered visible fish and dynamic reflections, messy crops and crop variation, as well as better crafting. So I have those checked off. So let us go through the process together of installing some of these other mods I would like to showcase off today. And, but first, let me show you how I go about uh, uninstalling mods. Now, nothing I showcase just now is at risk of causing a failure if you uninstall it. But one thing I want to make sure we cover is things to keep in mind when uninstalling mods. So if you have a mod that changed the map of something, and when I say map, I mean it added space or changed how a space, um, the space's layout, I guess is the best way to put it. If anything like that has changed, you have to be very careful to maybe get all of your items out of that area. Because if you don't, then you could end up with a uh, issues where you have chests you can't get to or NPCs out of the map that shouldn't be. Those are the kind of things that might happen if you uninstall those mods without being mindful of, you know, what exactly is being changed when you install and uninstall. But none of these change the map of anything. So these are safe to uninstall. And then we actually already covered this earlier, but the other thing you'd want to look out for is if you got a warning that uninstalling a mod would corrupt a save file, which we did see with Space Core. So because I have Space Core installed, even though I'm not actually using any mods for Space Core, I only have it installed for showcases like these, but because I have it installed, I can basically never uninstall it at, or I would risk my save files. So that's just something to keep in mind. But because we covered all of these today, I'm going to go ahead and remove these and I am just uninstalling by deleting the files in the folder. You can also disable them. So what I could have done instead is moved all of those files to a disabled folder. And here you'll just see some files that I normally play with on my actual playthrough, but I disabled them so they could show up other mods today. Um, but 
And again, you can have parent folders. I have a parent folder for disabled and how I disabled them is just putting a period in front of the name. But let's go ahead and get some other of these mods downloaded. I don't know if I'll be able to cover all of the mods today, but I promise you whatever mods I don't cover today, we'll save for future community mod spotlights. So let's go ahead and go back to this page. Let me take a little hydration break here. All right. So to download mods, you are going to want to have a Nexus account. Now I have two Nexus accounts, actually. I have one that is not premium and one that is. Now I've covered how to download on a normal account before, which basically on a normal account, you're going to have a slow download and an advertisement basically for a fast download. It is perfectly okay to do sound slow downloads. Uh, you really don't need to have premium. It's only a, a nice to have item. Now there are some bigger mods in other games like Skyrim where it's more beneficial, but I'd say for Stardew Valley, you're pretty safe not having a premium account, but it's a good way to support Nexus if you are loving it as much as I do. So the account I'm on now is premium, so it might look a little different today, but I wanted to make sure we could quickly go through the downloads together. Yeah, the list is likely going to keep growing anyway. Yeah, well, I am planning to make this uh, community mod spotlight a regular thing. So again, anyone, if you have mods you would like me to showcase, uh, mods that you think are just really cool, feel free to link them to me in that mod recommendations channel and I will be happy to cover them again as long as they are uh, family friendly. <laughs> Random question, but who's your favorite character in Stardew Valley, Yoria? Hmm. You know, it's changed over the years because before I would say my favorite was Maru because <laughs> she was always who I picked to be my partner. But I don't know who is my favorite now. I think I'm just kind of enjoying getting to know everyone again. I always found the wizard fascinating and I always wanted to be his apprentice like back in the day. Uh, I know there's mods actually for that now, but I don't know who would be my favorite be now. I'd probably say George. George is my favorite. I love grumpy old dudes. <laughs> oh my god, you like Maru? Yeah, I love Maru. She was always my go-to. I will say I probably won't pick her in my current playthrough just because I've I've had her every time besides <laughs> besides now, but I never actually met anyone who did. See, I always thought she would be one of the more popular ones, but I guess not. Like, everyone uh, seems to love Abigail because she's very adventurous. Or, um, you know, Sebastian and Shane and all of the others. I don't know. I forget who's the, the community favorite. There was a poll not too long ago. And it surprised me, I remember. <laughs> but... Yeah, Maru is my go-to. But yeah, George is my favorite overall. Because he just... It's just funny. I find grumpy old men funny. Hello! We are just covering um, some community uh, recommended mods today. Which the community recommended mods I'm covering are the ones that were shared to me on the Discord. I've already gone through some of them today, but if we see any mods that you have questions on, please feel free to let me know. All right, so we covered these. So I'm going to go ahead and close the ones we've covered. So let's go ahead and cover some of the other ones here. Now, some of these, I don't know if I'm necessarily going to be able to show them off, but I do want to describe them because they're very neat concepts and I really like the concept of this one in particular part of the community this one actually is heavily endorsed but let me go ahead and link it because I don't actually think I'm going to be able to show this off in the game because it's kind of a passive mod so we'll kind of just cover what it does together but this is a good one if you especially struggle getting friendship with everyone or 
you have trouble with the uh, degradation of your friendship with the villagers because you don't actively talk to them every day or things like that. But basically what the point of this mod is, is you are able to gain friendship points passively through ways that are not default to vanilla. So the ones they have listed here are villagers within earshot of the farmer when he's talking or gifting to another villager will cause a slight increase in friendship. Uh, and they kind of give the math equation for this, but there is math behind it. Villagers will get a slight friendship increase at the end of the day if one of their friends or family members gains a gift. Uh, shop owners will increase friendship when the farmer visits their shop once per day is the max you can get that. And then all villagers will increase friendship simply by joining festivities such as the egg hunt and the dance festival and everything. Marrying, increasing your spouse's child's friendship will increase to the wife's family. So if you were married to Maru and then you increased your friendship with your spouse or your child, you would also get increased friendship with, I'm guessing, Demetrius, Robin, and Sebastian. Completing the community center bundles will give an increase to all store owners except the dwarf and Krovis. And completing multiple bulletin board quests will give a slight increase to all villagers. And shipping at least one new item will give a slight increase to all uh, villagers as well. So that's what this mod does. Again, there's not really anything for me to show off per se, but it's a really cool mod if you want to be able to, again, passively increase your friendship with the village. Awesome, thanks. I subscribe. Thank you. Are all the mods free? Yes, everything here is free. So I am on a website called nexusmods.com. Having an account is absolutely free. Now, I will say this. When you make an account with Nexus, it'll heavily promote its premium service. You do not need the premium service, especially for games like Stardew Valley, where the files typically are not very large. However, if you did want to get premium, it's a good way to support the Nexus site. And then similarly, some mods will... Um, let you donate to the mod author, and that's a good way to support a mod author that you love. Um, and then plus it helps when you have lots of extra NPCs from expansion mods. Yeah, exactly. I didn't even think about that. That's a good point. So if you have something like Expanded or Richside Village, which adds more NPCs to the game, that's just more opportunities to get some passive points through witnessing and, and uh, all the other examples we went through here. So I linked this already, but that was part of the community. Again, nothing really show, but it's a really uh, amazing mod. So let me go ahead and mark that off in Discord. And again, all of the things that I am covering today are once recommended on the mod recommendations uh, Discord. And if you would like to join the Discord, we have an amazing small community. Oh, more villagers would be so cool. I've only played vanilla Stardew. So yes, there is quite a few expansion mods uh, out there, including the famous one, Stardew Valley Expanded. And actually, I believe that the Stardew Valley Expanded mod author helped to make changes to 1.6, like the actual 1.6 update. Because Concerned Ape, he is amazing with the mod community. It's so supportive. And like originally 1.6, everyone just thought it was going to be more support for mods. It ended up being so much more than that, obviously. But this, this whole community for Stardew just really supports mod authors and anyone who wants to dip their toes into modding. Explains the waterfalls. Yes, that's the first thing I thought of when I saw the Meadowlands farm is I saw the waterfall. I'm like, this looks like the Stardew Valley expanded farm. And it's really cool to see that the mod community is just getting a part of the actual game as well. All right, so let's go ahead and close out of this. And let's cover 
we can maybe get a few more content patcher mods going as long as they don't conflict. But I'm gonna just open some mods here. And then we'll see what we should download first. Let's go with these for now. So many dwarf mods. You were you linked me all the dwarf mods. I asked and you delivered. <laughs> okay. I think I think this is where we'll go for the next batch. So I want to cover for sure the farmer's children. Now I don't this is another one where it might take too much time to actually show off the mod, but I definitely want to showcase this mod. Uh, but it's called The Farmer's Children. And basically, the whole point of this is to make children more interactive. <laughs> uh, so we'll cover the specifics of the mod in a moment, but let me go ahead and link it in case you want to follow along. So this is The Farmer's Children. So what this mod does is allows your children to actually go to school, travel around Pelican Town, and really, again, just become a more active uh, NPC in the game rather than, I don't want to say something that just is there for you to hug and love, but they become actual people, right? That's the best way to put it. Uh, your firstborn loves animals and fish. <laughs> they like to spend time with Jazz and Vincent after school. But has a habit of falling asleep in class. Uh, a child two prefers a quiet places so that they can read through some days. A trip to the saloon arcade is fun. They ask a lot of questions but can be a bit rude to others. Uh, your two children are now big kids that go to school with Jazz and Vincent. They will travel around Pelican Town exploring their interests outside the farm. Um, and then this mod author points out something very important. And it's something I've covered previously, but I want to cover again. When you are downloading mods, you actually find Stardew Valley mods in a lot of places. But there's only two places I recommend downloading mods from. One is Nexus. So... The Stardew Valley Nexus is a safe place. You'll see here there is a virus scan. I don't think they let anything through that fails, but you can always verify the mod here with the virus scan says safe to use. The other is if you go to smappy.io and then you go to mod compatibility, any mod that you are interested in, this is where I would look it up. So. Let's say you are after UI Info Suite. You'll see on Nexus, it is no longer updated in Nexus, but it is updated in GitHub. But don't fan it, follow random links you get on the internet. Always verify that links are from Nexus or the link that Smappy.io gives you. And it'll be in green if it's working with 1.6. It'll be yellow if there's an update uh, or another mod that you should be downloading. It'll be red if it hasn't been updated for 1.6. But Smappy.io, an amazing resource. But UI Info Suite 2 is one that is no longer on Nexus. You have to go to GitHub to download it. Only, only ever download mods through Nexus or Smappy.io. Never download random links. Unless it's from a trusted source that you know won't accidentally send you something malicious. Um... That's how you know that it's safe, is if it's through Snappy.io and Nexus. And then anything on GitHub, Snappy.io will take you to the page you need, and then you're just going to download the zip and install like you would normally. So that's how that would work. And I'm glad the mod author pointed that out, because there is people who make malicious versions of mods and try to pass them off to people who are unsuspecting, and it's an unfortunate way to get information stolen. Uh, oh my god, have you seen the Elliot in shipping bid mod? <laughs> I thought that one was funny. I have not seen that. 
I would love to uh, check that out. I actually think it would be good to do a funny mods live stream one of these days. So maybe once I collect enough of those, we can do do that. But that sounds funny. Ah, uh, the dark shrine of <laughs> selfishness. <laughs> yeah. As the second child, that does sound like an accurate description of me. Yeah, I am more of an introverted person, IRL, I will say. And, I don't know, finding a nice cozy place to read. Especially in uh, Pelican Town. I feel like there's a lot of places to find a cozy spot. Child, child labor mod, mod when. I'm sure... I'm sure someone's made a mod like that already. I'd be surprised if there isn't, but yeah, I mean, I was given chores as a kid. There's no reason you shouldn't be able to give chores to your children, right? Have them uh, water your crops. That'd be a fun uh, mod to do. Uh, so this one, I don't know if we're going to be able to really show this off in the game because I don't have a save ready with children in a molt. But this, again, is the... Uh, the Farmer's Children. And I do recommend checking it out if you want to, again, bring more life to the children of Stardew Valley. Uh, your children, specifically. <laughs> Alright, so let's go ahead and download some of these other mods. So Better Water 2 is a content patcher mod, and it changes the way water is in the game to be a bit more visually appealing. So we'll check that out. And again, because uh, this particular account I'm on is on the premium version, you're not going to see that page appear that says slow download or fast download. If you're not on the premium version, slow, the slow download is fine. These files are not big enough uh, where it'll take an extensive amount of time to download. I'm just on my premium account so that we can get through the downloads a little faster. Uh, grains overhaul. Oh, and then one thing you want to make sure, again when you are downloading mods is you are making note of the requirements. This mod requires content patcher, even though it's not listed on its requirements. Um, that's something to keep in mind is people sometimes don't necessarily put the required mods properly on here, but if it has content patcher in the name, assume, assume you need the content patcher framework installed. Uh, yeah, someone, uh, been updating a bunch of shipping bin mods and, and been a mass updated old animal and has been uh, mass updating old animal mods. That's good. Yeah, that's one thing I'm very happy to see with 1.6 is how many mods are getting updated. So it's kind of bringing new life and awareness to old mods you may have missed before. And then there's a whole new set of mods coming in on top of that. So it's just a lot of really good stuff going around. So we'll check out Better Water 2, and I'll link everything as we go through it in-game. Some of these I have not checked out myself yet, and we are approaching these, so we'll be learning these mods together. So Grainth Overhaul. I actually haven't read into this one, so let's read through it together. At six new grain crops, including gluten-free. Nice. Uh, renames unmilled rice to brown rice in rice to white rice. Oh, that makes sense. Adds five new cooking ingredients and adds five new cooking recipes and one more food item. Maybe Gus knows a thing or two. That's your hint that those can be getting, uh, the recipes can be received from Gus. Uh, NPCs will react to these new items according to their own taste when gifted. And so let's go ahead and download this. And we'll see here that we need several mods for this one. So we need Constant Patcher, which I already have installed. Generic Mod Config Menu, which we covered earlier and I already have installed. We'll also need Multi-Yield Crops. So let's go ahead and download this one as well. And then let's download the Grains Overhaul. And then let's also download Help Wanted Redux for 1.6. This mod enhances the daily quest board in front of the shop. Oh, that's cool. It looks like it makes it so you know who is posting. 
So it replaces this single help wanted quest with a list of quest notes stuck on the billboard and requires people to actually like or even love the items they request. Ignores the game's restrictions on items to request and sets a max price for item request. So it's kind of like a good uh, balancing mod. And then there's some new quest as well uh, via content patcher. So let's go ahead and download this and then hopefully we can get a few of those quests to show up in our test playthrough. And this one only required Smappy. More mushrooms as forage. That's 30 new mushrooms to forage. So if you are if you love mushrooms, this is your mod. Because that is a lot. Ooh, truffles. Lobster mushroom, nice. I was trying to see if I recognized any of these mushrooms. So let's go ahead and see what's required for this. So farm type manager. I think I have this one installed, but I will double check. Actually, I don't think I do. So we'll make sure we download farm type manager as well. That's why it's always important to go over the requirements of a mod to make sure you have everything you need. And sometimes even frameworks require other frameworks. So like farm type manager requires content patcher, but we already have content patcher. So we're good to go there. And then let's maybe only do a small batch for this next go around. Let's also make sure we get to this greenhouse mod that was recommended. and get that going so to install mods i have a a video oh no i didn't clean up my downloads folder so just a little fyi if you're ever installing a bunch of mods it's probably helpful to <laughs> clean up your install folder but i think i can get these last ones we'll get rid of those because we covered those ones already and i am going to cheat a little bit. Now, if you follow my video, I show you how to do it with the Windows Basic uh, Extract All, but I am also have a program that I want to show off called 7-Zip, and this allows me to mass extract everything, and then I can basically move all of these to my test folder. And then we can get going in the game. So let's go ahead and start the game. And I'll get that going in a sec. I want to make sure I show off the console as well. Oh, I remember you talking about that long ago. Yeah, so if you're talking about the greenhouse, yeah, I covered that mod. I think I covered that mod in a very old video but it's still my favorite, uh, one of my favorites. I also like the Oasis Greenhouse. I, I probably use that one more, but this one is another really great one. So I think my old video probably still stands for this Greenhouse mod, but we'll, very, uh, we'll be covering it in today's live stream as well. So let's go ahead and get a game loaded. There we go. Now I want to pop my head into generic mod config menu to take a look at some of these mods configs. So we have the grains overall here. And then here you can enable or disable any of the new grains. But I think I want to keep everything as is. But if you ever change, but you want to go back to default, there is a default button. So however it was when you first downloaded the mod, you can always revert back to it here. And then Better water, it has different colors. So if you don't want teal, you can pick a different color from these four options. So there's teal, blue, bright, which I'm guessing is just bright blue, and dark. And then you can change the color on Ginger Island as well to a different one if you'd like. 
And then uh, how transparent you would like the water to be. Whether the water is more shiny, um, fills in bridge holes, which I'm not sure what it means by that, but maybe we can figure it out together. And then same, it'll change how fountains and fish ponds look as well. All right, so if we go into Ren's greenhouse, we'll see here you can change how Ren's greenhouse looks in all of these different areas, including um, how much uh, space is allowed in the whole thing and whether or not you want the cellar. So we'll be taking a look at that as well. So let's hop into the game and test some of these mods out. Let's go on the test farm for now. Now I'll make sure we don't get double music. Let's test out Ren's greenhouse first. Actually, no, let's go look at the water. So we'll see here that the water has changed and we can maybe change the option again just so it's more obvious. But we'll see that these are no longer the vanilla textures for the water in the fish pond and these small ponds here. And then let's go check out the lake and see how that looks real quick actually too. So this probably would pair well with dynamic reflections and visible fish as well still. There might be some overlap in what changes. So it kind of will probably take playing around with one you would like more. But we'll see here that the water is a bit more opaque because we picked semi-opaque. But if we go back, let's change the water again. Let's make it translucent. Oh, it says it's experimental. So it may not work. Uh, anything that's marked as experimental by a mod author is not guaranteed to work, but let's try it out. And then let's see what bright looks like. And then we'll save. And then let's load up again and see if the water looks any different. It looks good. Left uh, at a default likely should play with some of the other options. That's the nice thing about mods like these where they give you multiple options to play with. Ah, it did make a difference. So we made it everything transparent so you can see a lot more within the water. But then also it is much brighter than the teal. So very nice. I like I do like that water quite a lot. Let's go see what the lake looks like again. Just so we can get a comparison. Yeah, that looks really pretty. I like that a lot. I think if you uh, paired this with dynamic reflections, assuming there's no conflict, it would look really pretty. And the same thing with visible fish. I absolutely love those mods. And then pairing it with something like this, I think you could get something really special. Uh, let's go back and see what we had. So there was the billboard stuff as well. So let's see if there's anything on the billboard, which there is. And we can see here it looks very different. So we have different notices for different NPCs. And if you hover over them, you can see the preview of what the quest actually is, which is really cool. So Ali at once a rainbow shell. And again, this mod changes it so people are asking for things that they love. Sebastian wants maple syrup which I didn't know he liked. Uh, and then uh, Sam wants a bream fish. Pierre wants mead. Jody wants a diamond. Of course, of course, everyone loves diamonds. And then Robin wants an apricot. So if we actually click on them, then you get the regular quest. And then you can go through and accept the quest like normal. But yeah, it's a really cool system to actually see who wants what and have that little preview going. So that's a really cool mod. I like that a lot. Let's go ahead and link that one, actually. So this one was... 
Help Wanted Redux. So let me link this to you guys. So you can find that here. And then we had Better Water 2 for Content Patcher. And we showed that off and you can find that one here. And then let me mark those off as well in Discord. Once I can find them. Maybe I'll find them later. Oh, there we go. And then we covered the Redux. There we go. So we've covered those mods. Let's maybe also see if we can find any mushrooms. That'd be cool. Now, we're obviously not guaranteed with forageables to find anything, but we can also cheat and find some of those items if we need to. Maybe let's go to the forest and see if we can find anything. Oh, actually, let's go to the secret woods, maybe. Whoops. And then let me cheat real quick to give myself some invulnerability. I don't see any forageables, but that's fine. We'll check the forest, and if we can't find it there, then we'll check somewhere else. Oh no, I am no longer tracking. I don't know why. There we go. All fixed. Alright, so let's go to the forest. So let's do this instead. Let's go ahead and just go into the items menu and let's type in mushroom. Oh, wow. And they're all right here. Yeah, when, uh, <laughs> yeah, when I lose tracking, my avatar falls asleep. So I'm glad you think it's cute, though, because it took me a second to set that up. But it's a way to also let myself know that <laughs> something's gone wrong. I've been having a little bit of issue lately, but hopefully I can get it fixed up. So we'll see here the many mushrooms this game has added, including uh, Aspen, Beartoothed, Black Trumpets, Caesar's Mushroom. I'm not a, a huge uh, mushroom knowledge person, so I assume these are all real mushrooms. And then we saw in the preview before that... Uh, they had ones I do think are real, like the, the lobster mushroom and the truffles. But really cool. So that's a really neat way to add a lot more mushrooms to the game. And there, I know there's a lot of like fashion sense mods that add mushroom hats and stuff like that. So that'd be a cool way to go hunt for mushrooms while Mary, uh, wearing one of those fashion sense mushroom hats. It'd be... A really cool immersive thing to do. So let's go ahead and link the more mushrooms to you guys. And again, uh, that's more mushrooms as forage. We just did not have a lot of luck with that. But any new forageables in the game is always welcome. And keep in mind for that one, you will need the framework farm type manager. So you need that to get the mod to work properly. And then farm type manager needs content patcher to work properly. Content patcher, you should probably have no matter what if you're starting to install mods. But always keep in mind the requirements of mods when you are downloading. So let me mark that off our list. Oh, I should have downloaded the uh, more fish too while we were at it.
So we'll get that one soon. So maybe let's check out the grains next while we are on the topic of crops. Which let me just double check I have it installed. I do. So there should be new grains in the game as well. Which we knew they changed the name of the rice, right? So there's white rice now. And brown rice. So we can see that that was properly reflected. And they even changed the names of the artisan goods to reflect the new name as well. And then what was some of the other new crops with this? Let's let's go back to the Nexus page and see. So we have barley, buckwheat, and then there's a nice little preview here of all of the items that I'm listing off. Um, Malay, oats, rye, and sorghum. Every, every stream I call myself out for how bad I am at pronunciations. And then there's new millables, including pearl barley, buckwheat flour, holds millet, or millet? I'm not sure. Uh, rolled oats or rye flour. And then there's new dishes to be associated with all of these new items so maybe let's see what some of these are so harvest bowl sounds like something i would order so harvest bowl lots of energy uh plus farming plus foraging plus speed so let's give that a go looks very pretty pretty food is most of the time, good food. Not always, but... And then... Oh, I never showed that off in the game. Let me re-show that. Harvest bowl. And then let's grab some of the other ones, too. So... Oh, they have overnight oats! I love the overnight oats. My favorite overnight oats recipe is rolled oats with almond milk and lots of berries. And honey. So overnight oats is 38 energy, defense, attack. That one's really cool, actually. I like all the different effects. Oh my god, Yoria, have you seen that Stardew Valley came out with a cookbook? I pre-ordered it! I'm so excited for the cookbook. I actually think I'll show it off on stream as soon as I get it. But I, I had it pre-ordered the day they announced it. I'm so excited. Maybe I'll try to see if I can do like a, a cooking video too and, and throw that up with uh, some of the recipes it has. So let's go ahead and just show off the farmer eating some of these. These are really nice recipes. Like fun ones that are like actual food that I consume. Very cool. I like that a lot. All right. So anything else I want to show off for the grains overhaul? I don't think so. So let me go ahead and link it to you guys. So this is the grains overhaul. Highly recommend it. I am really enjoying the new crops and recipes this one's offering. And then let's go ahead and double check what I have installed. So I think we just have the Ren's Greenhouse to cover, which I do, again, have a video on. It's really old, so I'll have to refresh my own memory on this. So let's go to the greenhouse. Now, I was covering this earlier, but this is an example of a mod that changes the layout of a map. So if you use a mod such as Ren's Greenhouse, you would want to make sure that if you ever uninstall this mod, everything that's outside where the standard greenhouse would be, you'd want to remove or you would lose access to it when you uninstall. So always keep that in mind with mods like this. 
But Ren's Greenhouse is really cool in that it's super, super customizable. Um, you can change how this window looks. You can change how large of an area this is and what layout it has. You can also change uh, this area and its layout and like all kinds of things. You can change how this whole area looks. And then um, this is also a spring, I think. I think I can go in. There we go. So you enter in through the top there. And then this gives you uh, energy. Re uh, re replenishes your energy is the best way to put that. Just like it would in the hot springs north of the uh, Robin shop. So let's go into the ways you can customize this. Now I won't go too deep because I believe my old video probably still holds true. But if we go into generic mod config menu and then we go into Ren's expanded greenhouse, we can change again those window frames to let's say be uh, dark. We can change the glass to be clear instead of glossy. Um, let's add a rice patty expansion. Uh, the backdrop auto does it based off the farm you're on, but let's change it to something else. Let's change it to cosmic, maybe? Or let's change it to cliffs. And then again, you can change the style of different things. Let's just make everything maybe dark and moody. Let's change that pool area to be tidal. The irrigation area, let's have both small and large just so we can get both going. Uh, the big crop style, let's do a grove. And the small crop style, let's do planters. And then you can change the floor as well even. So let's make this grass. And then save and close and go back into the game. Would you ever do a ranking video of all the vi villagers? If that's something people are interested in, then yeah, I'd be happy to do one. We could do it as like a live stream even. I always like hearing about the opinions people have about the villagers. Yeah, I'm always interested in those kind of vi uh, videos too. I haven't watched ranking video in quite a while, but yeah, I'd be happy to do one. By the way, people have to let me know how this time is working out. I had to change my normal streaming time because there's construction going around me. And I wanted to basically make sure you guys weren't getting a bunch of background noise. So hopefully this time slot is working for everyone. So we'll see what those options I changed. This greenhouse looks really, really different. Now, I think um, we can kind of go over what changed what. So the pool title, it basically looks like the title uh, pool from the beach area to make it match that essentially. And then the glass no longer has a glossy sheen, and then we changed the background to cliffs. Now, if you kept that on auto and you had the uh, farm type, and I apologize, I, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but the one that comes with the mining area, uh, it might be called cliff, I'm not sure, um, then this is the one you would get automatically, but you can customize it again, we saw through generic mod config menu. Now, one of the options we put is we wanted irrigation in big and small plots. And that is exactly what this main area has given us here. And then we wanted the small area to be a grove. So it put an area for us to basically plant a bunch of trees. So again, this one super customizable. And then we also have a rice paddy field, which we requested from that mod as well. And again, you can use a lot of this stuff functionally, so you can refill your water in the trough here. And then, um, really just your heart's content with these. I would recommend that you pick the layout you want before planting anything. Because again, anything where the layout of something has changed, 
if you're not careful, you can potentially break your ability to reach items, or it could just look a little funky when you pick a different layout. But yeah, this is Ren's greenhouse mod. Let me actually see if I can dig up my old video. And I'll link that, and then I'll also link the mod for you guys. So this is Ren Expanded Greenhouse. And then... If I find my channel... Let me... See if I can find my old video. Oh, this is a little of a throwback for me. Uh, this video is two years old, and uh, this is the before and after of uh, my model and my tracking, for that matter. So, a little blast from the past here, but uh, most of this should still hold true. So, I will link this if you're curious for it. Uh, obviously, I have more updated mod coverage uh, of things nowadays, but this one was specifically for this mod. Oh, yeah, I remember that avatar you used to use. Yeah, even compared to my first video, that's like such a dramatic change in my avatar. It's, it's come a long way, and so is tracking for that matter. But that was Rin's Expanded Greenhouse. Let me mark that off. I think I'm keeping track of everything. So I think we're ready for another set of stuff. We'll probably just go through one more set of items or mods to check out. And then I'll, again, anything I missed, I'm trying to keep track of what I have uh, hit or not. So I'll try to make sure I cover every single mod that is recommended. So if you know of a mod that is really, really cool that you'd love to share with the community, don't be afraid to give suggestions. I would absolutely love that. So let me go ahead and close that up. We have some mods already um, selected, but let me see if we want to add one or two more. So I got all of the first couple checked. Let me... Make sure I have the greens checked off. Farmer's children, we did. Yeah, so Immersive Sandy will cover. Uh, more new fish, we'll cover that. Hmm, I might save the Dwarven mods for next time, because then we can do like a whole Dwarven showcase right off the bat. So I might save the Dwarven ones for next time. I love the Dwarf mods, though. I remember there was a mod I covered way back in the day that was all about Dwarves, but I unfortunately I don't think it got covered or, or updated for 1.6. Uh, let's see, there is a NPC mod we can cover. Ooh, and then let's cover this Luna Astray. And there's a couple of NPC mods you guys have recommended. Thank you guys for all of these. I'm super excited to try these out. Ah, and then the raccoons. Yeah, we're definitely going to have another couple of streams ahead of us, I think. You didn't recognize I changed my avatar, so you had to dig for my videos. <laughs> oh, yeah. Unfortunately, it there was a very dramatic change at one point with my avatar. I do think from here on out, it'll be more subtle changes. I do actually still update my avatar. It's just there was one big change I did when I basically started making uh, videos at one point weren't after I had taken a small break. So hopefully it's more obvious now. 
Uh, my sound has also changed, I think, since then, too. So I sound a little different in my old videos because I had a different microphone back then. Welcome back. Um, yeah, it makes sense. Uh, yeah, it makes me sad. So many mods stop being updated. Yeah, this one, like as amazing as 1.6 has been, it is sad to see a lot of mods basically die. I don't want to say die, because some, some people are still actually playing on the older versions of Stardew Valley. But for most of the community, they're not playable anymore. And it is sad to see them go, but hopefully they will, most of them will get updated. Uh, how often do you stream? I try to stream at least three days a week. Um, on weekdays, like today, it is in the evening on Central and Eastern Time. The It was earlier in the evening, but with construction, it is later streams now. And then uh, I try to stream on the weekends if I can, if I'm not too busy, in the morning. Luna Astra does fit the Shadowkin theme in Magic. Yeah, I'm excited to look at this one. This almost looks like an expansion mod. Maybe... Oh, there's new fish and everything. Hmm. I'm wondering if I should... Oh, yeah. This is like... I might wait for this one. Because I want to make sure I give expansion mods their proper due. So... Maybe next time we'll cover this in the dwarven ones. So let's save the Luna one for next time. Um, let's see, what else do we got? Uh, let's look at a portrait mod. And then the rustic country town interiors. And the wind effects. So let's look at those. And then that might be all we cover for today's stream, and I'll make sure to cover the rest in a future stream. Uh, it gives me something to look forward to after school on my days off work. Oh, I'm glad. I, I'm hoping I'm always providing value, especially with the mod spotlights. The, the gameplays, I kind of hope everyone can kind of just relax and chill with me and even play your own game in the background. I find I love... Certain games I absolutely love listening to someone play as I'm playing, so I'm kind of hoping I can offer that kind of vibe with the playthroughs. But then, yeah, I'm hoping the Mod Spotlights can just add value to the community by showcasing the amazing things mod authors are putting out. And I really do thank you guys for um, really helping me find some of these amazing mods. Uh, it pairs well with Rich Side? Okay. Yeah, we'll make sure... To give it its proper dude does it require rich side i guess i didn't check before i closed the tab but i'll make sure to look at that before the next stream yeah i like watching people play stardew valley when i'm too tired too yeah there are some games that are super relaxing to listen to right before bed and stardew valley's got a really amazing soundtrack for that all right so Immersive Sandy. Let's go ahead and first and foremost, I'm going to clean my downloads folder real quick. So Immersive Sandy um, looks like makes Sandy more immersive by giving her a more dynamic schedule, more events, and more dialogue with optional Sandy Emily rival heart events. So getting some Sandy love here. She doesn't get enough love in Stardew Valley. So you just need content patcher for this. So we're good to go. More new fish. All the fish. Oh, wow. This is a nice graphic. So this literally tells you where you can find each fish and how hard the fish is to catch. And if there's any requirements like raining or whatnot. That's really cool. I love it when model authors give nice graphics like these. And this one... <laughs> Whoa, this adds 140 new fish to the game, fishable and crab pot. 
So this adds a ton. So if you love fishing, this is the way to go. Uh, so let's go ahead and download that one. So this one, you need a couple of different mods. So you need the mail framework mod, the producer framework mod in content patcher. So we'll make sure we get these downloaded as well. And then we'll download the new fish. I heard Sandy was part of a poll they did on who people wanted to romance. I'm sad Sandy didn't win the poll, if that's true. I, I could see her definitely being someone people wa wanting to romance. I do wish you saw her more often, rather than just the desert. I love fishing, but it tends to be uh, too much. Yeah, I will say, like, I like fishing to a degree, and then it gets old. Um, so, like... There was a couple days in the game on the current playthrough where it rained too much and we did a lot of fishing. I think after like a couple days of fishing in Stardew Valley, I'm a little over it and I'm ready to go do other things. Oh, it can be stressful at times. Yeah, I agree because like I'm really bad at catching, catching the harder to catch fish like legendaries and I've been struggling with catfish in my current playthrough. Uh, Professor Jasper Thomas, uh, after becoming the laughing stock of his peers for his outrageous theories regarding the uh, Salon, hmm. sorry guys, I don't know if I can, I can word that one. Uh, geologist Professor Jasper Thomas has returned to Pelican Town. It can help him overcome his embarrassment, or will he, or will he fall prey to his obsession? So this is an NPC mod. And this just requires a uh, content patcher and Daisy Nico's tile sheets. So we'll make sure we have that downloaded. And then the portrait mod, they, oh, I accidentally closed out of that when I shouldn't have. Uh... Let me make sure I get some of these open again. Okay, we're good now. Okay, so we got Immersive Sandy. And then... New Fish. Jasper Thomas. They deserve it too. Okay, we're good now. Uh, oh, Yoria, you've never tried any fishing mods. I know it's cheating, but I actually have. And actually, I was meaning to make a video showcasing the different fishing mods, but then 1.6 came out and it actually, like, kind of scrapped what I was doing. So I might do an updated live stream covering all the fishing mods soon. Uh, I'm giving some a chance to update for 1.6, though. Be right back. I want to grab some spicy... Ooh, spicy ramen sounds good. All right. So they deserve it too. Portraits for vendors. That's cool. Ever thought it was unfair that Pierre gets to show his face on the shop menu while all the other venues get zilch? No, that's all right. Let's give them portraits anyway. They deserve it too. So these are our portrait mods for the vendors in a vanilla uh, friendly uh, uh, portrait fashion. So let's download this. Rustic Country Town Interiors. Now this hasn't been updated for 1.6, so there's some textures that might be missing, but it was still um, recommended to me by someone in the community who says it still holds up. So we'll be giving this one a go as well. And then wind effects. This one I'm super excited for. I have not seen it yet, but I'm super excited to see if it works. Wind blows through Stardew Valley. Watch your crops, grass, trees, and bushes sway in the breeze. All right, so we have all of those downloaded. So I'll kind of show this off again. But 
I have all of everything downloaded, including the required mods. Uh, I am going to close out of Stardew Valley first. And I am going to... Go through my testing folder. And... Extract all of these here. So now we have everything extracted. And we can go ahead and start the game up. Oh, it looks like we have an error. I actually kind of like it when these things happen. Because it lets me diagnose problems with you. So it skipped wind effects because it is no longer compatible. So let me see if there was a 1.6 version. Uh, so on this page, it's not showing an updated version. And what I'm looking for when I'm looking for 1.6 mods is if it's been updated since March 19th. Or it specifically says in the description that it is updated for 1.6. But what we can also do is when it gives you an error like this, you can go to smappy.io. And I was showing this off earlier. But you can go to the My Compatibility page, type in wind, and we can see what pops up. So wind effects is broken. Use the unofficial version. So because this is where Smappy took us, I consider it safe to use, um, but the reason it was in yellow is because this is not an official version by the mod author. So let's go ahead and download the unofficial update. And again, because that's where Smappy took me, I have confidence that that mod is okay to use. And once again, don't use mods. <laughs> that you don't get through Nexus or are something you can go through directly through Smappy because then you risk downloading malicious content. So now that we have that downloaded, let's go ahead and close Stardew Valley again and then get that installed. So let me extract that and let's move it to my mod folder. And now if we launch Stardew Valley, let's see if that error goes away. Perfect. So we'll see if I go back to the console that it is no longer red. Red is bad. It means something did not load. Yellow is a warning. So it warned us about Space Core, which we talked about earlier. Space Core, if you uninstall it, can corrupt a save file. And then in my case, I have some other programs on my computer that can conflict with Smappy, but we are not going to worry about them for now because I do not have those programs running. So let's get uh, looking at the mods that we have downloaded. And these will be the last ones for today's showcase. All right, so let's see what we got in the generic mod config menu. So for Immersive Sandy, you can enable Rival Hearts if you want. I'm not going to. It's not something I think we can showcase in today's stream. And then for more fish, there is the ability to make fishing easier and, and enable dialogues with Willy. And then it looks like you can it changed the lionfish and you can use the legacy one if you would like. Uh, Jasper, it will say whether or not you want to change certain aspects of what this NPC does, such as polydating, meaning you can date multiple NPCs. Um, and it looks like you can define your your first child's gender if you'd like. And when your anniversary is. Portraits for vendors. You can enable or disable individual vendors if you would like. 
And then Rustic Country Interior, you can say which structures you would like to change, such as the bathhouse or the coop. And then wind effects, um, it says how powerful the wind is or if you want to disable it for certain things. So let's go ahead and get into the game and see what some of these are about. All right, so if we go back to the test farm... Let's go ahead and maybe go to the traveling merchant first, because I believe that is one of the NPCs that gets a new portrait. So let's go to the hat spender. Actually, oh, did this one have a portrait before? Let's check the mod page and see together. Nope, this is a new one. So if we go back to Nexus, we can see a preview of all of the NPC portrait mods that were added with this uh, immersive, sorry, not immersive, the D They Deserve It To portrait mod, which actually, let's go ahead and link that for you guys. So They Deserve It To, which is a vendor portrait mod. And this is... The hats guy! He's so cute! Oh, I did not mean to buy a bow, but I'll take it. And then let's go to the traveling merchant. Nice! So we have the portrait mod for the traveling merchant as well. So just giving all the vendors that love, not just Pierre anymore. So I really like that one. I might keep that for my playthrough actually. I love finding mods that I will use in my actual playthrough. All these mods are amazing, but I do try to limit how many mods I'm doing in my current playthrough. I'm trying to introduce them just a little bit at a time. That way I can showcase them as I'm going through the playthrough as well. But yeah, that was They Deserve It To Portrait Mod. What else do we want to show off today? We want to show off uh, Immersive Sandy. So let's go visit Sandy. So Sandy will have a different schedule with this. So we'll see if she is at the desert or not. Uh, let's go ahead and change the time in the game. And then we have Sandy here. This is her normal schedule, but just to kind of go over what the mod does again, Immersive Sandy makes it so you get to see her more often because she has a dynamic schedule, is part of more events, and has more dialogue. Uh, I don't think we'll be able to really show off just how extensive this mod changes Sandy in this live stream, but it's a very good mod to check out if you love Sandy and would just like to see a lot more of her. Um, so just to kind of go over what the changes are, the hard events, do get changed a bit, it looks like, or maybe these are additions. And then there are new hard events if you enable the rival events where she is a rival with Emily, which I don't know if I wouldn't. I don't like the the rivals idea, but I can definitely see where a lot of people would have a lot of fun with that. And then there's spoilers for the hard events, and then it talks about compatibility with other mods. So if this is something you worry about conflictions, um, then you might want to take a closer look at this. I know Looking for Love is a popular one, so that might be one to look into. And this was Immersive Sandy. <laughs> Maru is my love.
if this was any other, if this was any of my past playthroughs, we would be rivals for Maru. All right, so that was Immersive Sandy. Oh, let's take a look at all these new fish now. I don't know if I know any of the names of them. Off the top of my head. Um, one thing to keep in mind, I was just briefly reading over the description of the mod. That's something very important to do, especially when you're downloading lots of mods. This mod is not compatible with other content patcher uh, mods that change freshwater tilapia. Uh, content patcher mod is one it calls out specifically, but pretty much any mod that changes... Um, fish you might want to take a look at just to make sure it doesn't conflict with this one. And then I was trying to see if I could get a name of some of the fish. So we have all the fish here. So let's, <laughs> there's a fish called telescope. Let's look at that one. So if I open my cheats menu, Telescope. <laughs> it's a cute fish. It's a little dorky looking. A little hard to see with the background here too. But kind of reminds me of a goldfish, which actually is another fish that's available. Goldfish. So if you've ever wanted a goldfish and to throw it into the tank, there you go. And actually, I think you can throw fish into the tank in the community center. So let's go into there. I think you can do this. Yeah. So here, I just threw those fish in there. So there is the telescope right here and the goldfish here. So that's just two of the 140 new fish that this mod author uh, provides. But so many new fish. And uh, it's just a really fun way to make the fishing experience a lot more varied because that is a ton of new fish to catch and then i'm curious i forget where the fishing achievement even is um but i think it you could probably track that in some way as well collections yes so there's quite a bit of fish here I'm not sure if they're added to this list or not. Jellyfish? There was like a definitely a jellyfish looking icon. I wonder if that's added on here. Stubby. <laughs> okay, we have to look that one up actually. That one looked so cute. Stubby. Stubby squid. Look how dorky this uh, icon is. Let's put him in the water. I'm so curious. <laughs> That's adorable. I love that. Yeah, this is a really good variety of fish. Thank you for recommending this to me. I'm getting a kick out of just how uh, dorky this one is. But yeah, that was more fish. Let me <laughs> just kind of go through like how many are added here, right? So many. And they included all the screenshots to look at. There's gotta be like 30 screenshots here. But yeah, 140 new fish. That was more new fish. Which you can find right here. All right. Uh, let's look at rustic country interiors next. And actually, let's go back to the farm. Because I want to see if the wind effect will show. I don't know how often wind happens. I'm not seeing any changes. Whoops. Did not mean to change scenes there. 
I'm not seeing any of the wind effect taking place right now, but that could be because the unofficial version... Oh, no, here it is. There it is. The wind effect. It worked. That's cool. I like that a lot. It's kind of the same effect of you walking through it, but not as intense. And it happened randomly, it looked like. And then it happened in little rows. But that was cool. That's a good way to add a little bit more life to the game in a very subtle way. So I will link that. Now keep in mind, what we downloaded from Nexus did not work. That was the unofficial version. So just to cement the idea of looking to Smappy, again, you want to look for updated mods at smappy.io slash mods. And then... I'm just going to link the smappy.io website because if the link ever changes, since it's not a Nexus mod, I don't want to lead you astray. So I'm just going to link the smappy website and you can look up wind effects there. So again, uh, the unofficial version was here. So that is wind effects. See if I can get it to pop up one more time. Yep, so we can saw the bushes just there were shaking a little bit and then the grass as well. So happens in random intervals and it's a really nice effect. I do like that a lot. All right, so I think there's just one or two more to cover. So let me get back to check out maybe rustic country town interiors. So let's go to town. Let's maybe go to piers. So we can actually see the mod right now in the cutscene, even. We're going to go ahead and skip the cutscene for now. And this is the rustic interior. Now, again, even though this hasn't been updated for 1.6, it's not blatantly obvious um, any missing tiles to my eye. So, oh, here's one. So if a mod hasn't been updated for 1.6, what you might get is tiles like this. So you'll see there's like a very dramatic shift. Now what's happening here is this is supposed to be lighter, I think because of the window maybe, but, um, because of the missing tile, you'll get just little areas like this. And it's kind of up to you how much is too much of missing tiles. So most of this seems fine. So if you're looking for a more rustic interior, then this is the mod for you. But hopefully it does get fully updated for 1.6. So let me go ahead and link this. And then let's see if we can find Professor Jasper. I think that's our last mod that we're going to cover for today. So let's see if she is or he is on the map. Oh, Jasper is at the library. So let's go there. Or the museum, I should say. Um, so again, we have some missing tile sheets here. Actually, was considering this mod. It looks nice. I do like it. I do think it needs to be updated for 1.6. Just because um, the tiles that it's missing, for me, maybe one or too many. But it is really nice. Hopefully someone can come up with an unofficial update too. That, I've seen a couple of those going around. Um. Okay, so ask Jasper is upstairs, but I'm not good enough friends with Jasper to open the door. So let's maybe cheat a little bit 
and find Jasper on this menu. This is the cheats menu. Let's go ahead and just add a few hearts right away. And meet Jasper. So Jasper, uh, good day to you, Yoria. This must be a busy season for you. So Jasper is a NPC mod. The NPC looks like lives above the museum. And we read the description earlier, but let's go ahead and go back to the description on Nexus. So he is a geologist that became obsessed with small on new. I apologize. I don't know how to pronounce that one. I am teleporting with the, the cheats mod. So actually, I'll go ahead and show off that as well. So I'm using, I always forget if it's say CBJ or JB. Yeah, CJB cheats menu. That's how I was teleporting around. I don't use it really in my actual playthroughs, but for mod spotlights like this, it's really convenient because I can kind of hop right where I need to. So this is how I was going around the town very quickly. And then let's go back to Jasper's page. So again, he is a geologist and anthropologist with, uh, in studying, uh, <laughs> that word I can't pronounce. He's obsessed with his work, but you want to help him realize that there's more to life than work, essentially, is the hard events that you'll go through with him. And then... A couple things to note. This has been... Uh, he has gift taste, a birthday, a dialogue for Gunther. You can befriend him. Um, and then he likes diamonds, rare disc, and blueberries. Or sorry, he loves those things. And then he likes dwarven artifacts and most geode minerals and most gemstones. Which makes sense because he's a geologist. Well, I had no idea you could teleport in that mod. That reminds me of the one episode from that Netflix uh, Junji Ito show. I'm not familiar with that one. Yeah, there, there's quite a few things that that mod can do. We can hop back into the game. So warp locations just warps you to any of the locations on the list. You can change your relationship. Um... You can make it so friendships don't decay. Uh, you can change the weather. You can uh, update your skills. There's uh, making it so fences are durable without the golden clock. You can auto feed, auto pet, that kind of thing. Instant catch if you want to skip the fishing game. And then make machines work instantly if you like. And then we were using this earlier when we went to the secret woods, but uh, infinite health, infinite stamina, et cetera, et cetera. All kinds of cheats. Very useful. Very useful if you're wanting to showcase mods in particular. But I know a lot of people use this for things like uh, Harvest with Scythe. And then No Friendship Decay. And Durable Fences. I think a lot of people download this mod just to enable those three things specifically. Um, So if we go talk about Jasper again... Let me open up Chrome on my end. And then we have spoilers for the heart events here. So it looks like we can trigger one if we come back upstairs, maybe. So let's see if we can do that. Oh, yeah, we did trigger one. So we entered upstairs with two hearts and that triggers the first heart event. I cannot believe it. I refuse to believe it. This is a terrible news. Terrible. I'm ruined. He looks very sad. Oh, you surprised me, Yoria. What's wrong? Is everything okay? What can I do to help? I'm sorry to disturb you. Is everything okay? No, Yoria. No, it's not. Someone from my past is trying to ruin my present. I wish to discuss this with someone. 
Oh, well, I'm right here. Uh, I'm happy to help. Well, don't look at me. I'm not your psych psychologist. That's mean. I'm happy to help. Thank you, Yoria. Several months ago, I submitted research proposal to Zuzu City University requesting support and funding in my latest quest for knowledge. Today I received my response and it was not variable here. Ooh, quite the letter. Let me take a drink of water before I read off this one. All right. Dear Professor Jasper Thomas, the board recently received your application for assistance in researching the lost secrets of the dwarves. Oh, I should have paired him what this guy with the uh, the dwarf mods I was going to cover. Maybe I'll recover him too. Is this some kind of prank? <laughs> wow. We, uh, for we here on the Zuzu University Heritage Board are not in the business of funding fairy tales can research into the gems and minerals of the Ferngill Republic have earned you respect, we would advise that you abandon thoughts of dwarves or goblins or whatever other mythical beings take your fancy this week and return to what is real. Your application is denied, Professor Cameron Peasbody, head of archaeology at Suzu City University. Well, we know there's a dwarf. <laughs> they exist. Uh, where the geologist found something scary. That's what it reminds me of now. Junji to Mechanic, Japanese Tales. Oh, I've seen one episode of Tales of Macabre or Macabre. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Um, it was like the balloon head one. <laughs> that was something else. Uh, there was an episode about a geologist that found a curse. He looks like Harvey with long hair. They do look similar, yeah. Cameron Peace Buddy, she and I were childhood friends. But that all changed. During college, we became bitter rivals, competing fiercely for a claimed title of head student, each trying to outrank the other. Now she wormed her way onto the board, and I fear I shall never succeed. Can we introduce him to the dwarf? <laughs> Forgive me if I sound overly dramatic, it has just come as quite a shock. Yeah, that would be rough. But I will not let her destroy me. I am resolute in my determination. I also shall find evidence of dwarves, Yoria, and I shall prove her wrong. I feel like I'm holding on to a secret here, knowing the dwarf. Thank you for listening, Yoria. I had best not keep you from your work any longer. So that was the first heart event. I won't spoil the rest of the heart events uh, for you guys. But if you want to know how to trigger them, that was on the Nexus page, and I will link the Nexus page. I'm not sure if I did already, but we'll link it again, even if I have. That is Professor Jasper Thomas. Very cool and very good pairing with any Dwarven mods. So let me link this. And I think that is everything I want to cover for today's stream. But if there's any other mods you would like me to cover, feel free to join the Discord. And you can recommend those to me on the Mod Recommendations channel. And thank you to everyone who has recommended me those mods so far. I gave some special thank yous here on the bottom. And you can find the link to the Discord in the description and feel free to join and be part of our small community there. And if there's any questions you have on mods too, as we go through some of these mod spotlights, feel free to let me know during the next live stream and we can try to go over those questions together as well. But I think that is all I'm going to cover for tonight and I hope everyone has a good rest of your night and you found some cool mods from this. And I will see you soon.